Hey, it's part three of my competition tutorials. And in this one, I'm gonna cover one of the most important and rewarding roles in a competition, the judge. Every competitor is expected to judge someone else's solves at some point during the day. And parents and friends can also do so if they know how to. And it's pretty easy. Just watch this video. The role of a judge is simple. Make sure the solve runs according to the correct procedure. If you're a competitor, your name tag will tell you when you're supposed to judge. For example, mine says I should be judging group three of three by three. But I mean, if you ever see a station that needs a judge, just jump in and help out. It will make the day way more fun. Let's look at the three phases of judging, before, during, and after the solve. Before the solve, make sure the station is totally ready for the competitor. Reset the timer to zero, make sure the mat is clear, and even check that you know how to use the stopwatch. Typically, the top right button is for both start and stop, while the top left resets the time to zero. Once the runner gives you the cube, handle it carefully. Remove the scorecard, Quickly check that the cube is scrambled, making sure that the competitor does not see the cube at all as you place it down on the table with the cover. Don't slam it down in case it damages or turns the cube. Look how this judge uses both hands to support the cube as it's placed down. Now that everything's in place, it's time for phase two, the actual solve. Once the competitor looks settled, grab your stopwatch and ask, are you ready? Are you ready? They now have up to one minute to tell you that they're ready. Once they do, Lift the cover off the cube and start the stopwatch at the exact same time. That's probably the hardest thing you need to do and it's really not that hard. No need to say 3, 2, 1 or even good luck. When the competitor says they're ready, just start the stopwatch and lift the cover at the exact same time. The competitor now has 15 seconds to inspect the cube and you're the one to make sure the rules are followed. Look at your stopwatch. Once it reaches 8, give the competitor a warning by clearly saying 8 seconds. Then at 12, say 12 seconds. No more, no less. At some point, the competitor will place a cube down and put their hands on the timer. Keep your stopwatch running. This is very important. You only press stop when the competitor lifts their hands from the timer to begin the solve. But what does the judge do while the solve is happening? Easy, not interfere. Don't talk to the competitor, don't go on your phone or start cubing. Any of those things might distract the competitor or yourself from doing your job. Stay focused and alert. Once the competitor stops the timer, phase three of your job begins, which is to decide what the final result is. That's why they call you the judge. 99% of the time, the cube will be perfectly solved and you'll simply lean over to see what the numbers are on the timer and write it down onto the scorecard. Sometimes the front display says the wrong number, which is why it's better to look at the timer itself. And if the time says 12.291, then that's exactly what you write onto the scorecard. 12.291. Write as neatly as possible because it's not fair if the competitor gets a worse time due to messy handwriting. Then sign your initials in the judges box, ask the competitor to sign in their box, then put the scorecard and cube back where it came from, hold it up and wait for a runner to collect it. It's that easy. Oh, and make sure you reset the timer to get ready for the next solve. But wait, you said 99%, how about the missing 1%? Very observant, see I knew you'd make a good judge. Sometimes, something will happen that means that you as a judge have to penalize the competitor, either by completely disqualifying the solve or by adding a time penalty of two seconds, also known as a plus two. Here are some examples. If the competitor picks up the puzzle after stopping the timer, it's a plus two. If they start or end the timer with their palms not facing down, it's a plus two for each. If the time on your stopwatch is past 15 seconds, but less than 17, which means they took two seconds too long to inspect the cube at the start, it's a plus two. But the most common plus two you'll have to deal with is when the cube is one turn off at the very end. So if the cube ends like this, it's a plus two penalty. It's still considered solve, but we add two seconds to the final time. If it's like this, it's also a plus two because a 180 degree turn is still considered one move. However, this is not a plus two because it's two moves away from being solved. This cube is not considered to be solved. And so now we write in the scorecard DNF, which stands for did not finish. But what if the cube is only slightly turned at the end, like this or like this? First of all, do not touch the cube. You may accidentally move it. Then use this rule. If it's less than halfway off or 45 degrees, it's all good, the cube is solved, no plus two. If it's past 45 degrees, it's a plus two. If it's really close to 45 degrees, then call a delegate. At every station, you'll find this, a paddle that you can hold up to call a delegate to your station to help you out in situations like this. In fact, here's an easy rule. If you're ever unsure about whether it's a penalty, 
don't try and figure it out yourself. Just call a delegate and they'll help you. If you think you might have done something wrong as a judge, same thing. Call a delegate and they'll help you get sorted. Oh, very important. How do you write a plus two onto the scorecard? Well, if the time was 15.330, you write this. 15.330 plus two equals 17.330. And it's possible to get multiple plus twos. So if the competitor took between 15 and 17 seconds to inspect and ended with one turn off, you'll write plus four. Oh, and if they took more than 17 seconds to inspect, it's a DNF. Judging is super fun and rewarding. I've done it hundreds of times myself, and it's one of the most important roles in a competition. So get in there and help out. If you haven't watched the first two parts of my tutorial, you can check it out right here. But otherwise, that's it from me. We hope you enjoy your competition hosted by Speed Cubing Australia.